Main Farrell in the house with the WFXR Sports sit down. And of course, this is a big week of racing. Of course, our neck of the woods are talking Martinsville. One young lady, it seems like she's had racing in the blood over the last decade. Uh, she has uh, done a lot in the NASCAR broadcasting game. She's the host currently of the uh, race day and then the co-host of Race Hub and all that good stuff over at FS1 and Fox. Virginia native, raised in Warrington, born in Harrisonburg, did a lot of work in the Tidewater area. <laughs> and it's my joy and pleasure to speak with one of the greats in the business, Miss Caitlin Vinci, KV in the house. What's up? How are you? Thanks so much for having me. I love that intro. That is one of the most animated introductions I've had for myself. So thank you. I loved it. <laughs> well, I'll send it to you. You can use it for motivation <laughs> if you right. want to. There you and, go. Uh, I tell you what, it, it, you're, you're looking over your career. It seems like over the past decade, you, you've been in racing one form or another on the broadcast side. It's a sort of a two-part question. Where'd your love for sports broadcasting, but really particular racing, where did all that come from? Yeah, so when I was a young girl, I mean, just 12 years old, I was already practicing doing the news on my home camcorder, my parents told me. Uh, I guess I must have just had some sort of a fascination with journalism from a very young age. Um, and sports kind of you know, once I was in middle school and high school, sports became the focus for me. And I started working for our school paper, covering our, our teams, of course, at a very small high school level. Then once I was in college, that's when I really honed in on truly pursuing the path of sports journalism. So as you mentioned, I went to college at Christopher Newport University in Hampton, Virginia, majored in communication studies, uh, did various internships while I was in school to kind of position myself for a job upon graduation. One was with a small racing division here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Another one was with a local news affiliate in Hampton, Virginia. And I also worked for my athletic communications department at my university. So all those kind of things helped position me to get a job right out of school because I felt like just having the degree was not going to be enough. I needed to have that experience from internships. So I started working at a local racetrack uh, right out of college as a host and reporter. It was $100 a week. I had to work at a tanning salon and waitress to pay my bills. Uh, but, you know, I had been to some races when I was in college because it was a social social sort of experience for, for college students because Richmond Raceway was there. Martinsville wasn't too far away. So college kids would go and tailgate and have fun. And I absolutely fell in love with the sport. So once, once I had kind of gotten the racing bug, then I just, I was fully devoted, dedicated to pursuing NASCAR journalism. So when I had that job at Langley, that was how I built my demo reel that I would keep updating and sending to Fox Sports. And eventually they hired me. <laughs> you know, it was was neat, and, and, and I have to say this, and, and I went to your YouTube page, because I was just trying to say, okay, let's see if I can see some video of Miss Caitlin back in the day, and it seemed like even when you first started, it seemed like you had like that it factor, and to see your growth from the early 2010s to, I think that's how you say it, 2010s, to where you are today is awesome, so I wasn't really surprised to see where you are today, so I, I personally want to say that to you, because I think you had that it factor right then and there. So kudos to what you're doing. Um, you. When, when you look at just that first part, you know, uh, Langley, Langley, which is, you know, Langley Speedway, a nice little track. Everybody, like I said, it's a social event. Everybody goes out there and party and all that good stuff. But it seemed like you got your chops there. What do you feel like was the biggest thing you learned in those early days at Langley to carry you to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, I think just uh, the relationships I was able to establish from a pretty young age, you know, I interviewed Bubba Wallace and Chase Elliott and all those guys came through Langley Speedway and they were kids. I mean, we were all kids. I was 21. They were, you know, Chase Elliott was 14 years old. So it's, it's interesting to me to reflect back on how long I've known those guys and our careers have kind of evolved together, essentially. But I think that experience was so valuable just because at that level of racing, it is still very much grassroots. You don't have a lot of resources as a reporter. You, you're kind of on your own. It's just you and your camera guy or even just you. So that's a good experience to have, I think, as a person coming through the journalism field of doing it all kind of yourself. Because even outside of language, 
Langley, I started filming reports in my house with a green screen I had rigged up and a camera that had been donated to me because I wanted more experience talking about racing on camera, but I couldn't find really any jobs outside of Langley that would hire me. <laughs> so I just sort of carved my own path and I started posting these reports to YouTube and they eventually got featured on NASCAR Illustrated's website because um, they saw them and thought they were uh, worth their time. And so those are the kind of things that I learned at an early age was just to be a self-starter. I was very self-motivated. I created my own opportunities. I didn't make any money hardly at all, but in my head, I felt like it was going to pay off at some point. So those were probably the biggest learning things I had early in my career. And just looking at some information on your bio in 2012, you, you kind of got that first opportunity with Speed, which is now FS1. But back then, Speed was, all, they did all the racing and you joined that Speed Road Tour. Just talk about that experience for those couple of years. Yes. Yeah, so um, my boss that I still work for now is the one who originally hired me for that p position. And it was basically, you were hired as a live stage MC, so you were getting the the fans and everyone engaged before the the actual shows were taking place on the speed stage. So that was really fun for me because I loved that fan interaction. You were doing trivia with them, you were doing games with them, you're doing on camera social media videos. So I knew once I got in at speed, I was like, all right, this is it. Now I'm in the door. I need to make the most of this. So I still would put the bug in people's ear, our executives, of what my ultimate goal was. Even though I loved doing the speed speed road tour team you know the goal was to be on air full time and it was pretty shortly after that they gave me an opportunity to do reporting in the charlotte area and then it just snowballed from there and, and then i became full time on air um and i still have the voicemail in my phone of when they called me to tell me that i was going to make the change and i will keep it forever <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed and it seems like, so basically, you, you kind of, once you made that transition from reading this, 2014 is when you made the transition where you actually did, you kind of made it to the big leagues. You know, you were in the minor leagues a little bit. Then you made it to the big leagues. You, hey, I'm ready for big league pitch, and KV is ready to do her thing in the pits. So you started off in the pits, and you still do some pit work. It looks like a little bit with the trucks because, you know, you, you're doing all that. And then, you know, to, to, to do the pit work because, you know, when I go down there, I cover Martinsville, and I see how hard you, you pit workers work because it you're it, it's it's a different type. I and mean, I know people want to do sideline reporting, and that's different because you're dealing with one team or two teams. But right. when you're a pit person, you're dealing with you know a few dozen. I mean, you know, like three, nearly three dozen teams. You know, just just talk about your first experience. You know, covering pits. I mean, was it what you expected or? Just your thoughts on that, because it looks like it is a template challenge. It is. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I, I would say peer reporting is one of the toughest sideline gigs in sports, period. Uh, the elements are tough. Usually it's, it's very hot temperatures. There's fumes. There's a lot of noise. You're balancing so much traffic in your headset because you're scanning all of the team radios on one side. And then you have, of course, the broadcast, the play-by-play -play announcers, the other pit reporters, the director, the producer in your other ear. So that's a lot of traffic that you're managing all the time in your headset. And every race is different. So it's the unpredictability factor makes it fun, but it also makes it very challenging because you never know which teams are gonna have an issue, what the parts failures could be, what, it, it, there's just so many storylines that are gonna develop every single race that you have to be prepared for. And when your boots on the ground and those elements uh, to your point it's not just two teams you're assigned a whole section on pit road and you may have five six of the top people at certain points in the race so you're running around like a crazy person the good news is a lot of us would have a pit spotter who was kind of our second set of ears and eyes that would be scanning the radio channels and that relationship was so important for me i was on pit road for four years for the truck series and i had the same pit spotter for all four years and he he was one of the very best in the business and it makes a huge difference. You know, you just have that extra sort of person uh, looking for information and maybe making sure you don't miss something. So that is, is a really big resource for those on pit road. And then you kind of graduated, you know, it's kind of like going to school. You graduated, now you are a host. So you don't really, you aren't in the pits probably as much as you normally are because you're hosting. You know, and talk about that transition because, you know, obviously you're, you're seeing all the stars down in Charlotte when you shoot it in the, 
studio because I remember we did the uh, the NASCAR tour and we went through the and I think I we might have bumped into you back because we, we did it in 2019 so we where yeah. you know they would have us you know the, the Fox affiliates would come through and we would be down there at your studios which was very impressive but you know talk about making that transition to host now because that's a that's a big responsibility there. It is. And, you know, it was definitely challenging at first. You know, we were in the green screen studio set, which we were all kind of learning together. That was my first year full time hosting was in that set. So not only was I trying to kind of get acclimated to the new role, but I was also trying to get acclimated to the new studio. So there was a lot of moving pieces when I first made that transition. And I think for the host, you know, you're in charge of keeping that entire show on the rails. You know, your analysts need to trust you, trust the direction you're going in, that you're not going to throw something at them they're not prepared for. Um, I feel like it's a big responsibility to come on and off the air clean, to have good chemistry to bring good information um if you're in a situation where you need to fill a certain amount of time you got to have a lot of you know nuggets in your back pocket for things that you can ask them and information that you can present on the show so there's a lot to it again you know the communication you're hearing i don't think people realize how much producers speak to us while we're out there on the set you know, they're giving us prompts constantly about where we're going next, what segments we're moving on to, if we're leading to a feature, they're giving us countdowns to break while you're speaking, you know, you need to learn to be able to balance that. And I think it's a very, and you know this, it's a very unique skill set to be able to do that, to talk eloquently, make it sound, make it sound sensible while you're having a person speak to you in your ear the whole time. I mean, that, that is not easy. Um, and I think it just comes with repetitions, of course, uh, and anything, you know, just gets easier with time. But um, hosting, it is a whole other animal than pit reporting, but they're all pretty hard, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yes, indeed. And then obviously this week is a, is a big week, a special week. We're talking Martinsville because this is the only time of the year where all three series will be racing under the lights at the same venue, at the same track. From your perspective, give me some of your fond Martinsville moments, you know, when you, you were there, because obviously it is a special place. I mean, I've heard people call it the Wrigley Field, the Fenway mm -hmm. Park of NASCAR, and it's the 75th anniversary year, so it's even a bigger year. Yeah. But just talk about that. Being a Virginia native, it's got to be special when you can go to Martinsville. It is. I absolutely love Martinsville Speedway. I, I mean, it, to me, it feels like a race of the days of old a little bit. You know, the venue very much it looks kind of the same as it has for many, many years. You go there and you expect to see true short track bumping and banging, racing, great races to the finish, uh, a lot of action. And then you couple that in with a night race and it pretty much doesn't get any better than that, in my opinion. I think the short track races under the lights are so much fun. So this weekend, I anticipate will be very eventful. Uh, the truck series will be up first, which they always put on an excellent show when it comes to Martinsville. And this weekend, we've got some, some not new faces, but some outliers, I guess you will, in the field, like Kyle Busch is running in the truck this weekend. Johnny Sauter is back in the truck. Those are guys that have had a lot of success on the short tracks. So I know that that will make it very interesting for the series regulars. But um, when I think about Martinsville, one of the memories that stands out to me the most was attending that race with Steve, the late Steve Burns, who was one of our most uh, iconic, I would say, broadcasters in NASCAR ever. And he had kind of taken me under his wing um, as a mentor. And I actually went out to that racetrack and shadowed him on pit road which was a really incredible experience. And I will always remember that obviously as, as one of the best memories from that track. So I think about him often, but certainly always when I'm, I'm at Martinsville. Now I know I'm only supposed to have 15 minutes. You still have some extra time I can speak with you. Cause I know 15 minutes, we kind of yeah. hit that mark. So I, I just want to make sure, cause I don't want to beg and be like, Hey, you went over. So I just want to no, make no sure. Worries. Um, Again, I'm speaking with Caitlin Vinci. She is the host of NASCAR Race Day and Race Hub every day on FS1 and, of course, with Fox Broadcasting. Um, I got to ask you this. So 
How many marginal hot dogs have you had? <laughs> um, I honestly don't know the exact count, but I have had a lot of them. I actually like them. Some people don't, but to me, it's like you can't go there and not have one of those things. It's it's just like what you do when you go there, right? And they're really not that bad. People give sometimes give them a bad rep because they're a strange color, but they're good. Trust me. They're good. <laughs> and they went nuts when they changed it. I mean, when they changed that hot dog, I mean, you thought they would have. Where else is that me? Yeah. <laughs> They're $2, so it's only two bucks. Yeah. It's not like they, they, they can sell it for more than that. Uh, when you look at when you look at the just the the role of of NASCAR, I mean, just think about this. Like you you said yourself, and I saw the video. You you were a kid, and you interviewed Bubba Wallace, and look where he is today. Is it kind of neat to see? Because a lot of these these stars today had got their start in the truck series. Is it neat to see the growth of some of those people you covered now they're at the Cup Series level? It's amazing. It really is. It's so cool for me because obviously my whole life pretty much revolves around these competitors and knowing everything about them from their statistics to their background to their charitable efforts to whatever it is. So we're obviously just like any sports reporter. You're so engrossed in what they're doing all the time. And for me, from watching some of them from such a young age and what they've been able to achieve, I know I mentioned like Chase Elliott, but my goodness, he's a champion now in the sport and he won a championship at a very young age. And it is really neat to see that because we have gone through it kind of together. I've, I feel like I've risen the ranks right alongside them. So there is an immense crop of young, talented drivers right now in NASCAR. Um, you know, obviously Denny Hamlin won last weekend. He's a little bit on the older side. I don't want to call him an old guy because he's not old, but he's older than some of the others who've been able to get to victory lane so far this year. And it's been incredible to see because it's been a very, very long time since we've had sort of a youth movement of this, you know, significance. Um, in the sport. So there's a lot of young drivers that are really starting to make a lot of noise in the cup series level, which is extremely hard to do. And pretty much all of them have come through the trucks and gone up the right way through the ranks of NASCAR. So it, it's fun. There's a shift. There's a definite shift going on. Now, when you look at, I mean, obviously the spotlight is always going to be on the cup series, but you know, you, you cover a lot again, the Xfinity and the truck series for people who probably don't understand talk, Talk about the value of that level of racing because those are the top three levels. And it's kind of like, you know, when the trucks, you're kind of like freshman JV, things kind of JV, but Varsity's Cup. But talk about just that value from your perspective because you're really cutting your teeth, you're learning things. You know, especially at Martinsville, the truck series has raced for Martinsville for years. So obviously they have a, a big advantage, but just talk about that aspect of it. Yes. I mean, those lower series are hugely important for the growth and development of drivers. I think some of the very best ones, they spend a decent amount of time in the lower series before they made the push up to cup. And I think it's important for them to have that seat time um, in those lower levels. Uh, you know, I look at a, a, a like a Kyle Busch Motorsports that's done such a good job of bringing along that next crop of drivers, whether it's William Byron, Eric Jones, Christopher Bell, you know, they all came through the KBM program in the truck series and made their way on. We're looking at Ty Gibbs now who didn't spend time in trucks, but is in Xfinity series and making the most of that opportunity. And he has just been unbelievable. I don't think I've seen anyone of his talent level, just raw talent in, in quite some time. So those, those series, they obviously are important. I think sometimes when you see drivers get rushed along, they really struggle once they get to the cup level. Whereas if they've taken their time and they've put in several seasons and trucks and Xfinity, it makes that transition not as dramatic. Awesome. And then finally, have a little fun with you real quick. Again, Caitlin Vinci with NASCAR Race Day, the host of that show in Race Hub. It's called Farrell's Five. These are five questions. That they're, they're rapid fire, but not really rapid fire. But do what you got to do because you KV. This is your world. We're just living in it. So I'm going <laughs> to let you handle your business. So my first question for you is what is your favorite color and why? Oh, black, I would say. Uh, people always make fun of me because I'm always wearing black all all the time. It's like my go-to color for TV. I don't even know why. I just think it's flattering. It's flattering on everybody. And I would say that that's probably the one I gravitate to the most. <laughs> I think Dale Sr. would love that. Yeah, probably. He would definitely love that. <laughs> Number two, what is your pre, like, you know, back when you were doing the pit stuff, 
what was your race day ritual? Like, what are some of the things you did, you know, to get ready for the race to get hype? Race day ritual. Um, now I would say with me in the studio, the, the ritual is kind of always the same. I'm, I'm going through my preparation. Obviously we do production meetings. We do hair and makeup. My time in hair and makeup is usually sort of my relaxing time with our makeup and hair artists. And I love that. So they just kind of get me chilled out, zen, ready for the show. And we always cut up. We're making a lot of jokes. Uh, it's a good thing there's not a camera in there because some of it's, the jokes go off the rails a little bit. But that's always one thing I'm doing every single you know, time before a show. And I always need an energy drink usually because I feel like that extra shot of energy is is needed to like hype everybody up for a pre-race. So I usually ask for one of those at some point. <laughs> so I'm sure with NASCAR cups, you're sponsored by Monster. You probably knocked out a few Monster energy drinks, yes, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then, all right, I'm gonna put y'all the spot on this one. Um, I, I wanna ask this question now. If you wanna plead the fifth, you can. But mm -hmm. your favorite NASCAR track and your least favorite NASCAR track. <laughs> oh, well, my favorite is Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, there's a couple that I really, really like. I, and I enjoy racing at all of them pretty much. But Bristol is very high up on the list because if you've never been there, it is one of the most incredible, iconic venues in sports. That track is not afraid to try new things, which I'm thinking obviously in a week, we're gonna be racing there on the dirt. And that was such an incredible show last year. But I just think the people at Bristol Motor Speedway do such a great job of making it a whole experience for the fans. Uh, they always have concert, like really great concerts as well, in addition to the race weekends uh, at the track. So uh, to me, again, that short track racing under the lights in that Coliseum style stadium is just incredible. So. That one's probably my favorite. I don't really have a non-favorite. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you. Yeah, I disregard that that second part of the question. <laughs> so I, I won't put you on the spot because hey, you got a broadcast. I ain't trying to put you. I ain't trying to put you <laughs> on, online. Like, you know, um, your favorite dessert. Oh, oh man, favorite dessert. I really, I mean, I guess I'm kind of basic. I really like um, ice cream. Like you just can't go wrong with that, right? Ice cream. When I was pregnant with my first kid, I wanted it all the time. Like always wanted ice cream, which is not a good thing because you're already getting fat because you're pregnant. But um, yeah, I, I would have to say ice cream. <laughs> well, that's good stuff. Yeah. What's your flavor? What's your go-to flavor? Chocolate. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I, I'm a Neapolitan guy. I like the the strawberry chocolate go. vanilla, but I like uh, the my my mom grew up. We ate butter pecan a lot. So that, and then very the nice. Dough. So That's I'm, I'm good a little, choice. yeah. <laughs> but maybe sprinkles every now and then. What's those sprinkles? Yeah, sprinkles. Yeah, I like it. Uh, then my final question on Farrell's five KV in the house, Caitlin Vincy. Hey, I feel like I know you just reading all your information, Virginia native <laughs> like I am. So there you go. We tight. Um, Caitlin Vincy's having a dinner party, uh -huh. you know, and, and we'll cater it. I'll, I'll pick up the tab on it. Okay. You can invite five people from the world of NASCAR. It could be broadcasters, past, oh. future, anybody in the world of NASCAR. Who would you okay. invite and why? Five people, like a dinner party. You're holding this. I'm paying for it. Past. So past, past, or past, or past or present could be drivers. Owners, okay. crew chiefs, anybody in the world of NASCAR, who would you oh, invite? Wow. Uh, Dale Earnhardt would be number one. You know, it's it's difficult for me because I never got to meet him or really cover his career, which is is just odd for someone who's so embedded with the sport now to never have met one of the greatest that ever lived in a race car. So Dale Senior would be first. Jimmy Johnson is uh probably would be second he's my not so quiet favorite driver <laughs> i can <laughs> say that now because he's retired uh, but he was truly uh, when he was racing it was so hard to not root for him because he's such a good person on and off the track and from a media person standpoint we can really appreciate those drivers who are gracious and kind and helpful to the media whether they've had a good race a bad race or somewhere in between so i loved jimmy uh i wish we'd see him back in some sort of capacity in nascar because we miss him so I, I would invite him to my my dinner party 
I would invite Steve Burns, who I mentioned earlier, uh, just because he was such a great friend and mentor to me and I miss him every day. Uh, I would probably invite Jamie Little because I am co-workers with her now and she's such a fun time and she's just a, a great, again, mentor and friend I've been able to make in the business. And she always has cool stories about her time on pit road and all her time covering motorsports. So I would probably invite Jamie Little for sure. And I got one more and I'm trying to think on who, who my final person would be. Um, Oh, no, that's a tough one. I feel like you can use this on your show, by the way, if you want to get like if you bring a driver on, you don't have to call it Farrell's five. You can yeah. call it KV's five. So, you know, you can use that question. So this is yours. Now, if a bomb said, well, I got it from the sports director in Wichita Fall, I mean, in Roanoke, Virginia. But if it's great, it's yours. So, yeah, I love it. I probably maybe I would invite Tony Stewart. You know, he is another one that I think is just so entertaining. And we've had him obviously in the booth a couple times this year, and he's done a great job. And I feel like he would be a really fun guest at a dinner party. So this is a big, like, just mix of people coming at this dinner. <laughs> and then my final question, and again, I appreciate you giving me time, Miss Caitlin. Um, you mentioned Jamie Little and, and the women in the business, and I think it's great that women are doing broadcasting i'm a big advocate of it i i think it's awesome uh you know you know what's it like because there's there are you know there's a growth of women in the visit i mean you're in it i mean shannon spake on your you know on your network and then jamie lowell in the pits it seems like you all have that sisterhood and that bond you know how how special is it to have you know all the women getting into you know racing broadcast because there's and obviously there's some on the peacock all right, we won't mention them because that's Peacock. But anyway, overall in the business, it's great to see. Yes, it is great to see. I think, you know, within the last 10 years, I've seen a really big shift in the sport of women in non-traditional roles coming in. It's no longer just seeing women in public relations or marketing type roles. It's engineers, play-by-play -play announcers, track operators. I mean, you have all different areas being held down by women who are qualified for the jobs and not simply just to check a box that we have a female here. It's, you know, women who have dedicated a lot of time and have, have risen to the occasion to hold down these positions. And I think through our Women in Wheels franchise that I do for Fox Sports, that's one thing I'm very proud of is telling those stories and, and introducing our viewers and the fan base to more of these females who are making a difference. Um, but I, like you said, I am very fortunate that I have Shannon and Jamie that I work with at Fox. You know, the three of us together have a feel like a really strong bond and I look up to them immensely and I have for a very very long time long before I ever even got to know them when I was just in college watching racing you know those were the women I was seeing so for me it's an honor to work alongside them it's an honor to call them friends now I would not have expected that maybe to happen when I was 17 years old trying to do this so I never take those relationships for granted and I'm just very fortunate that there were other women ahead of me that paved the way and who are now beside me and helping me along through through all kinds of different things whether it's professionally or personally well Caitlin I tell you what you are awesome you have a fan up here and, and Jermaine Farrell up here at WFXR I tell you you do a great job Thank I love you. your work I, I appreciate you giving me time and like I said, you're awesome. And like I said, I'm buying stock in Caitlin Vinci because I see it going even further. So you, you knew it. Thank but, you. But I appreciate well, I, your time. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a lot of fun. I, I certainly do appreciate it. Good deal. And again, this is Caitlin Vinci with the NASCAR Race Day and, and also Race Hub, the host of that. And again, we're putting the dropping the checkered flag on the WFXR Sports sit down at WFXRTV.com. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed day, everyone, and go racing! <laughs>